Hello iOS developers, this is John Mead coming to you from San Francisco, California. Tonight I wanted to get into a little bit more of LLDB debugging uh, and this is going to be mostly um, having to do with disassembling some of the memory addresses that we can find in the uh, logging window which I found to be really useful many times. So just like last time in the last video, we need to create a problem to be able to debug it. And I'm good. So let's create a new project here. Again, it can be just about anything. It doesn't really matter. We just want to get into the code as quickly as possible here. Let's just create and go. And again, let's get right into the source code. App Delego would be the fastest way to do that. Let's get right into this. Did finish launching with options. And again, one of my favorite ways to create a bug would be to perform a selector that does not exist, which is exceedingly simple. And here we just put in a bunch of nonsense and we're good to go. So let's run this. And again, we'll see some sort of exception throw up here. So Last time we looked how we, we learned how to look at this kind of stuff through uh, the exception breakpoints, which we will you know, which again as a refresher you can set down here. Uh, another thing you can do, and this comes in handy when you just when the exception breakpoint doesn't help you at all. You don't have anything kind of useful up here. You don't have any anything useful in in the debug navigator. You're just completely lost. There is information here that can still help you. And that can come after, uh, just look for this where it says the first throw call stack. And in here, you're, what you're going to see is like this is the call stack. And in here are just a bunch of memory addresses that, we'll, that we will now disassemble. And I'll show you how you do that. Basically, you could just copy and paste uh, any one of these hexadecimal values into the debug window here with the command di. Or you can actually write out the whole word disassemble if you know how to spell that, dash s, which is the switch for uh, the starting, uh, the, the starting point of the of the memory block to, to disassemble. We're just going to paste that in there. And you can see that this has something to do with the exception process itself. That's this number. And in fact, if you look at all of these guys, there's going to be a whole bunch of contiguous memory blocks or semi-contiguous memory blocks in here that all begin with, you know, OX1, OX1, OX1. These are all going to be somewhat related uh, pieces of code here. I bet you this one also has something to do with the exception itself. Uh, this is exactly where it's being thrown. But if you keep looking down the stack here, you usually come to something that kind of stands out. And sure enough, here we go. This is a completely different allocation uh, section of where this me memory has been allocated and it's probably going to be exactly where this exception is being thrown in the source code itself. So let's try this guy right here. And in fact we get some interesting information here. So this is the method that that we got into and wrote our junky code that threw up the exception. In fact we get that you know points right to the implementation file and the line number. So let's go back to the app delegate and look at line 16, just to make sure that that is exactly where we screwed ourselves up. And and it surely is right there. So just to recap again, it's getting yourself into the LL debug uh, debugger once you've. Uh, you know, once you've had an exception, you're not completely lost here. There's a bunch of different stuff that you can do. In fact, uh, backtrace would be a good one. You can look at um, the entire backtrace. Uh, you can print out um, uh, any of the active variables in uh, this window over here. Um, let's see if it's a primitive value like that int there. You, you would do P A R T C, and you can get that this one is one, or you could do a P O with a R G V or any uh, other object here, and you'll get um, if it's an objective objective C object, you'll get a better description of what's going on there. So remember, disassemble D I dash S, and once again look for the memory address that comes after all of the exception ones, and you'll probably be able to get some decent information out of that.